This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazov moment. Tonight, raped after trying to discredit Islamophobes when meeting two Muslim migrants at night to help build leftist utopia goes wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been reported in several places, including at Robert Spencer's Jihad Watch. The title there, if you want to go read up on the story, is Swedish woman meets two Muslim migrants at night to prove xenophobes wrong is brutally raped. And Robert Spencer says uh, probably the most important thing introducing that story, quote, but at least she proved it. She isn't racist or Islamophobic, and that's the important thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the study of the left is a very bizarre and uh, it's a crazy journal, a journey just filled with so much morbid madness and evil and uh, it, just, it, just, it just continues. I've, I've studied the left since I was 13 years old or 12 or 11. You know, I took interest in the left as, as a very young kid because my parents came from the Soviet Union. They fought the evil empire. We were able to get out of there. We came to the West. And as a young boy, I, I couldn't figure out because we were in America now. We're in paradise. It was very obvious that we had escaped an evil empire. And then I started noticing these people called leftists that were just worshiping the hell that we had escaped from and hated their own society. So I began to study it. And so my study leads to a Swedish woman now who, uh, you know, in Sweden, who's a member of a, face group, a Facebook group that's against migrant deportations. They're really against deporting these Muslim migrants, these illegals, and they want to prove all the Islamophobes wrong, all, all, these, all these bad conservative people wrong. And, you know, they, you know, they label them and, and slander them as racist and Islamophobe and all this stuff. And in their journey of doing this, um, not only are they destroying their own society, as leftists often do, but in the end, they also, of course, sacrifice themselves. So the story here, ladies and gentlemen, this latest story of the fellow traveling of the left, is this Swedish woman accompanies two Muslim Afghan asylum seekers back to their asylum accommodations. She, she hangs around with them and at night she goes back to their place and they brutally rape her and abuse her. And uh, yeah, this is quite a story. It, it, it's a very normal story uh, in terms of uh, what goes on with what Muslim migrants do to the Kafir women. But uh, I'll spare you the details because this is supposed to be a family show. But you can go to Jihad Watch and read what uh, these Muslim migrants did to this Swedish woman. It's just, it's just horrendous. And she put herself into this situation. And she told the police afterwards, this is a leftist activist. Um, she's trying to prove all the Islamophobes wrong. And quote-unquote to the police, she says, I've never been afraid or worried about people from other countries. Quote-unquote, I thought it was quite interesting to talk with them. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's become so, so surreal. Because even when I'm speaking like this, I picture a certain audience watching this. And they're thinking, oh, Jamie, you know, you're so racist. You're so prejudiced. Why are you talking like this about Muslim people or Afghan people? This has nothing to do with race, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so just, just to get this out of the way. This isn't about race. It's not about Afghan people. It's not about any particular race. We're dealing with an ideology. So when you come from a Sharia environment, and this Swedish woman half has to have known, or I mean, you know, maybe they blind themselves to the point of, I don't know, but in Sharia, in the, in the, in the environment of Islamic law, you are allowed to have sex slaves. You are allowed to engage in rape, especially when you're dealing with the Kafir 
which is the unbeliever. And you should watch Bill Warner's videos. He explains all about it. Kaffir with a capital K. He, he explains how Kaffir is this very secret, dirty word that the Muslims use about unbelievers and that many people in the West have blinded themselves to. But in Surahs 4.3, Surahs 33.50, it is very clear that sex slavery is legitimate. Also in Surahs 24.31, in Surahs 33.59, it is very clear that a woman must be wearing hijab. And if she's not wearing hijab, well, then in, in the environment of Sharia, she is considered a whore. And then we know what can lead to that in Sharia and what's happening. And we know what's happening in Sweden, in the United Kingdom, in terms of the Muslim rape gangs, what's happening in France. This is a mass epidemic. But when it comes to this Swedish woman, who represents many of these leftists, many of these radical feminists, many of even the men that I'll talk about in a minute, and it's the history of the fellow traveling, they're just sacrificing themselves now on the altar of their utopian ideals because I've done a show with this with Daniel Greenfield, look it up. We titled it, Avoiding Rape is White Privilege. Yeah, that's right, okay? So you've got to get raped now by the Muslim uh, migrants because if you don't, you know, that's white privilege. So to avoid white privilege, you need to go walk back with two people who believe in Sharia while you're a Kafir woman and they consider you unveiled and see that you're not wearing hijab, see that you're a Kafir. Their ideology tells them to do a certain thing to you and it's fully sanctioned, fully mandated by the surahs, by Islamic theology, but yet you continue to do this. In that show with Daniel Greenfield, Avoiding Rape is White Privilege, we also discussed another case. There's just case after case here. So there was this anal rape of this, nor excuse me, I know this is a family show, but you know, this is where the left takes us. In, in, uh, you know, in, in Europe, there was an anal rape of a Norwegian leftist male. He considered himself a feminist and an anti-racist. His name was Karsten Nordal Hauken. Now this guy, starts hanging around with also these Muslim migrants and this Somali Muslim rapist anally rapes him, okay? And then this leftist afterwards feels really guilty that it's his fault and blames himself for the Somali Muslim rapist that gets deported and he insists afterwards that it wasn't the rapist's fault and it really wasn't about the sex. Uh, this is the world of the left, ladies and gentlemen. It just gets more and more insane. Um, and as Daniel Greenfield was explaining on that program that you should watch, just Google it, go to our archives. Now it's, it's become so twisted, the world of the left, that only privileged whites don't get raped. So now, you know, when you go out and help these Muslim migrants, you know, getting raped. I, I, it, it looks like it's just a badge of honor because you don't want to be engaging in, in white privilege. It's just going on and on. Um, many leftist, um, of these leftist activists, this is happening at the migrant camps in Europe and they're covering it up. A lot of the German women that were attacked in the Cologne New Year's Eve sexual assaults covered it up. Very interesting story. Mark Tapson wrote about this at Front Page Magazine. The U a UN advisor, German leftist activist Rebecca Sommer, has actually come forward and admitted that she had made a great mistake. The title of this article at Front Page is German activist has her eyes opened about Muslim refugees. And the, uh, the teaser that Tapson uh, used in that article that you should read at Front Page that those people, she says, quote unquote, those people who ate with me, drank, danced, laughed, they talk about me as, quote, stupid German whore. And for this activist in Germany who pushed for Muslim migration, just for everybody to be completely blind in terms of Sharia and what happens when you're bringing in people with an ideology that believes in Islamic supremacism, that believes that certain things should be done to Kafir women. And she's come forward and actually admitted that she has made a huge mistake. 
It's happening over and over again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, another female leftist activist who was volunteering at a migrant camp on the French-Italian border. This is another story out there. She was gang raped by a group of Muslim migrants. And uh, this Muslim, Muslim woman's main worry afterwards was that her attack might be used by, you know, Islamophobes to, um, to hurt the repudi reputation of Muslim migrants and the leftist cause. And she covered up her own rape for the sake of the political agenda. I could go on and on here, ladies and gentlemen. Read my book, United in Hate. I document a lot of this. It's a huge phenomenon of radical feminists who go to Gaza to try to help with the Israeli hatred. They go to Gaza to help the Palestinian death cult, to try to do all they can in the anti-Israeli cause. And these radical feminists get raped by, uh, by the jihadists there. And we know the history, and I document it in the United in Hate, of, um, of just, it's the history of the fellow travelers. This is what happens when you're building utopia. You know, and we saw it over and over again. Um, Paul Hollander, the sociologist, documented this, and I, you know, I wrote about this in United in Hate. When you're building this perfect utopian world, the Bolsheviks travel to the Soviet Union, that the communists in the West traveled to the Soviet Union to build that revolution when Lenin began, uh, you know, building everything. And then finally they were just exterminated by Stalin. How the leftist, uh, you know, how leftists in the United States and in the West traveled to the Iranian killing fields when Khomeini won uh, that revolution and took power. They went there to build their Sharia utopian paradise and then Khomeini killed so many of them. And we see this over and over again, how the utopian revolutions eat their own children. And this is what's happening here with this story, with this Swedish woman and with the, the, that Norwegian activist, etc., etc. But what's scary today, ladies and gentlemen, is that back in the day the fellow travelers traveled, whether it was, you know, Hanoi Jane that went to North Vietnam, or all those uh, you know, leftist believers that went to build communism in Maoist China and, and Stalinist Russia and then they got killed there and went missing or whatever. Today the problem is, is that these fellow travelers are not going anywhere. They're bringing these adversarial totalitarian ideologies and the people who worship those ideologies and follow those ideologies to our territory. So. This death wish that we see in the left, that we see that's happening here, they not only, their ideology does not just lead to the abuse and death of others, but it leads to the abuse of themselves and the death of themselves. And read United in Hate, because I dedicated my whole life to trying to understand this, because what's happening here is that the leftist hates himself. The left hates the world as it is. It hates creation. It hates God's creation. It hates especially the host democratic capitalist society. The leftist that lives in the West, that lives in the United States, that lives in Western Europe, they hate their own society. They want to destroy democratic capitalism, their own free society, and they're supporting that totalitarian monolithic ideology that's coming in. And what they want to do is they want to shed themselves of their own unwanted selves. They want to blur their own individuality into a collective totalitarian whole, right? So in that belief system, of course your own blood is going to be shed eventually. Of course you're going to get raped eventually, or whatever it is that you're doing in dancing and involving and engaging yourself in a romance with our totalitarian adversaries. So this is the latest story, ladies and gentlemen, this Swedish woman trying to prove the Islamophobes wrong, and uh, we see what happened. This is the dark, very, very dark and frightening story of the left. And in their enterprise, they not only per perpetrate the blood of others, the frightening thing is, is in the final chapter, for the leftist believer, the blood must become one's own. I'll see you on the next Jamie Glazoff moment. Good night.